I'm going to show you how we're going to make biochar in about 30 minutes without any fancy tools or setups. All you need is a metal drum with no holes in it, a cinder block, some dry wood to burn. I like to keep it under 18 inches long and less than one inch diameter. A bucket that we can store water in and some cardboard to help get our fire going. Now the key to get the biochar versus just turning this all into ash is getting a really hot fire in a low oxygen environment. So the idea here is we're starting a fire in the bottom. The flames are reaching up. The oxygen is going to whirlwind its way through and be burned up before it can access the burning material and the byproduct will exit here. There's going to be a little smoke but compared to having this barrel stood straight up, it's going to be minimal. And we should get a nice deep reddish orange flame. I'm going to start off using this cardboard to get a regular fire going. And once it starts burning pretty good, that's when we kind of change up the way we're going to put the wood in there. Now with our small fire going, I'm going to take some of these smaller sticks just to keep this fire growing. So here's the idea here. This fire is burning. We don't want this fire to keep burning this material. So to make this fire keep coming out this way, I just keep adding wood as it burns to the top. When I see my new wood is on fire, I just keep adding more wood on top of it. So this wood catches on fire and that wood doesn't burn as much. We want this fire to chase the fuel. Very simple, very straightforward. Just keep adding fuel to the fire. Yes, it's like a burning death on fire. And you can see, like I was saying, the flames are reaching up. They're hitting the top of this barrel and kind of spiraling out this way. We don't have much smoke coming out of here, which is a good sign. We're burning off the oxygen. On the building? Okay, what happened to that building that's in there? So this is the flame pattern we're looking for, and it's super hot, so don't stand in front of it. This fire is chasing all the new wood we put in the front, and as it gets closer to the front, it's going to burn even more oxygen off that's trying to get in there. So with all my wood in here, here's where we have to really watch. We don't want this turning into ash. So when it's starting to turn white, it's almost ready. When all this has a small white coat on it, we are going to extinguish this fire rapidly using the bucket of water. This is right where we want to be. You can see the, the white coating. Everything is burning. You can see the red embers in there. Now we're going to put the water on it. She's still smoking, which means it's still hot. So we're going to keep putting more water in there till there's no more smoke. If you're in a hurry, you can take some water and pour it on the barrel as well to cool that off. Here's where the cinder block really comes in handy. I'm going to gently tip this barrel. Put the cinder block in front of it. It stops the biochar from coming out, but it lets the water out. I propped up the back a little bit so the rest of the water can flow out. And you can see the cinder block stopped the biochar from leaving. We got the water out. This is what we're working with. We have nice biochar in here, but it's still going to be wet. So here's where you're going to have to wait. I like to leave the barrel on its side like this in case it rains and we want all this water to evaporate so this gets dry. But to show you what we're working with here, I got a couple pieces in here. So you can see this is a piece. It's got a almost metallic shiny coating to it which is good and then when you go to crumble it, 
it almost has a little metallic sound to it and it's black all the way through. The reason we want this dry is because the next step is to crush this biochar up. And if it's wet, it's just going to stick together a little too much. So when this is completely dry, what I'd do is I'd use my hands, I'd take a handful and crush it into a bucket. You don't have to get it perfect when it goes from here into the bucket because you can always come back and break up some of the pieces even more. So if you use this method, different size pieces of wood in there, you're going to notice that some things did not burn all the way through. Here's an example right here. I can still see wood in the center, but the outer coating of this is good charcoal. So it worked better dry, but I can come in here and I can break off the actual biochar part of this and I can save this piece for the next burn. Do not fear when you get the pieces that aren't burned all the way through because 90% of this is going to be good biochar. Now as for breaking it up, once it is dry, I talked about how I grab it with my hand and kind of crunch it into here. It breaks it down to a somewhat manageable size, but we want to break it down further. So when you're dealing with a smaller batch like this, like this here, if you burn this to capacity where it reaches the bottom lip here, you're going to get about five gallons of biochar out of a 55 gallon drum. I'm just going to come back through here, grab this with my hands and just keep crunching it up. just keep working my way through it. While you're doing this, you'll find the pieces that don't crunch up. Those are pieces that aren't done yet. You take those, set them off to the side for the next burn. Some people will take their biochar and lay it on the ground on a tarp or some cardboard and step on it or take something heavy and mash it up. That all works too. If I was dealing with a larger batch, I might do something like that. I'm not too concerned with this smaller batch here. We're not trying to get this down to a fine powder. We're just trying to break it up so the pieces are just less than a quarter inch. Now that we've made our biochar, it's very important to talk about what biochar is and how we need to use it. And pay attention because if you use biochar, in the wrong way, you're going to have a bad time. The best way to describe biochar I've ever heard is calling it permanent compost. Once biochar goes into your soil, it's going to be there for thousands of years. So you got to get this part right. So before you go adding the biochar to your soil, we have to supercharge the biochar. See, biochar is pretty smart for an inanimate object. It has this great ability to absorb nutrients but also release them. So if you go and put biochar in your soil without charging it up first, it's just going to take all the good stuff in your soil and suck it up so then it's not available for your plants. That's very counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish. What makes biochar great is it's very porous, so it's able to take in moisture and release it at certain times. And the same with the nutrients. So we want to pump this biochar full of nutrients before we add it to the soil. And there's many different ways to do this. One of the ways is like when we had water in here, you could have added urine to it and let the biochar sit in urine for a while. A very effective way is to take your biochar and just mix it into your compost. Biochar is harnessing all those nutrients. What happens is you're taking this biochar that's full of nutrients, probably mix it with your compost, you're adding it to your garden, and that allows the biochar to expel those nutrients into the garden. And usually that occurs when the fungi in your soil are able to penetrate the biochar since it's so porous and they can harness those nutrients. And since the fungal web is so big, they can bring them all over the place. So even if you don't have biochar everywhere, that fungal network is gonna take all that good stuff and move it around your garden. It's kind of like a storage facility. Instead of the nutrients just sitting in a soil where there's a chance for those nutrients to escape into the atmosphere, now they are inside that biochar, available when needed. Now, if you guys have been following along long enough, you know I don't do things the conventional way, so I'm going to charge my biochar differently. 
all of my biochar is going to be supercharged by the chicken composting system. The chicken composting system is a warehouse of nutrients created by the chickens. It is the absolute best way to compost and the only way I am composting from now on. If you want to start a chicken composting system, I'm going to put a link in the description. I guarantee you will love the results of the chicken composting system if you decide to set one up for yourself. This is a great place to utilize the biochar to supercharge it. This is underneath the roost of the chickens. So what my chickens do is they drop their manure in here and we make chicken manure lasagna all season long. And in the fall, I take this lasagna and put it in the garden using the biochar in here. When you put the biochar here, we are supercharging the biochar from the chickens. I can just take my char and toss it over the top here. If I had more, I could add even more in here. But here's where I really want to use the biochar in here. It's in the run itself because this is where the chickens are making the compost for me. And this is the stuff I'm going to use the way it is. So I'd like to have the biochar just mixed in there already. The good thing is, this is actually really healthy for the chickens. They could eat it if they wanted to. They don't seem too interested right now. But I'll just take all this and just kind of toss it around the chicken run. Let the chickens do all the work mixing it up for me. And I do the same thing with wood ash in here. Pretty much anything you can throw in compost is good to throw inside the chicken run. So let's take what I got now. I'm going to scatter it around. And as we make more biochar, it is all coming in here. And once the chickens mix it up, it goes right into the garden. This seems a lot simpler than most ways people charge their biochar, but this is going to be highly effective. Everything the chickens do in the chicken composting system turns out perfect. We don't worry about ratios. We just take anything organic and throw it in here. The chickens do the rest of the work. So that's pretty much it. In about 30 minutes, we made five gallons of biochar. I've seen the process take a lot longer for some other people. And I like doing things the easy way. And this just seemed like the easiest way to do it. And to make things even easier, we are just using the chickens to charge our biochar. Not actually worried about physically taking that biochar and mixing it into the soil. It's already going to be in this great compost. Compost mixed perfectly by chickens. If you guys enjoyed this way to make biochar, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Make sure you check out the chicken composting system videos. Like the video, tell your friends, and subscribe if you're not already. Thanks for watching. Oh.